Hello and welcome to the Thursday, August 1st, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today I wrote about a wave of attacks we are seeing against a relatively recent OFBIS vulnerability. OFBIS, if I pronounce it correctly, is an Apache project that is used to implement enterprise resource planning uh, software. So these are these massive systems that enterprises are using to do things like accounting and inventory, and essentially a set of JavaScript uh, features, a framework that can be used to create these type of applications. The problem here was that due to a relatively simple directory traversal attack, you are actually able to execute arbitrary code. The directory traversal part works a little bit different here. It's actually all about a semicolon, not about a dot dot slash or a pattern like this. Essentially, the part that verifies if you have access to a particular URL does cut off URLs at a semicolon, but then the full URL, including the part past semicolon, is being processed, allowing access to features that you would otherwise not have access to, and that then leads to the remote code execution. Best I can tell is that the attacker who is probing this vulnerability these last couple of days is using it to spread a Mirai variant. This is not 100% confirmed. I haven't gotten an actual copy of uh, the malware that they're sending to these OFBIS hosts, but the same attacker is using various IoT vulnerabilities and such to spread Mirai, which makes me believe that, well, this is just more of the same. Apache released a patch for OFBIS end of May that will fix this particular vulnerability. And then we got again some trouble with certificates. This time it's DigiCert who has to revoke a large number of certificates because they were not correctly validated. The problem here was the validation via DNS. And if you've ever played uh, with DNS certificates, you've probably seen it uh, where you have an option that you're adding a particular record to your domain in order to prove that you actually own and control uh, the domain. This record has to start with an underscore. And the reason for the underscore is that underscores are not actually valid for normal host names. So by starting the record, with an underscore, you make sure that it's not colliding with an existing DNS record. Now, these are random values, so the probability of a collision is rather slim, but still, that's part of the requirement to use this type of DNS validation. The problem is that DigiCert didn't necessarily always use that underscore in the beginning of the random value, which then led to them issuing certificates without technically fulfilling all the requirements of the CA and browser forum. Overall, not a big deal, but still good to see that uh, the oversight here works. And in case some of the certificate authorities are messing up, uh, that they're being required here to issue new certificates. And yesterday, Microsoft's Azure services suffered a major outage and we now know a little bit more about what happened apparently it was a denial of service attack here that triggered the incident now it wasn't just denial of service attack that actually took down the services but of course microsoft has some systems in place to protect themselves against such a denial of service attacks. Looks like those systems didn't act quite correctly. Instead of mitigating the attack, they actually amplified the attack. This is not unheard of. It's always tricky to defend against denial of service attacks. A lot of the times it involves filtering out attack traffic from real traffic and, of course, some simple mis classification of real traffic and attack traffic can 
easily lead to an issue like what Microsoft experienced here. Also, quite often, and Microsoft talks a little bit about this, there are routing changes involved as you're mitigating denial of service attacks. That's also error prone and easily sort of fires back if it's not done quite correctly. Not a ton of detail as to what exactly happened in this case, but systems should be back and available now. And Google announced that they're going to take advantage of application-bound encryption on Windows for Google Chrome. What this means is that they're going to use uh, the Data Protection API in Windows, which allows applications to have specific encryption keys that are linked to the application to encrypt sensitive information. What that protects you from is other applications on the same systems having access to data like cookies. Doesn't do anything about cookies being stolen in the browser by plugins or on the wire if they're not properly protected. Cross-site scripting would be another attack vector, but where it does help are info stealers, and that has become a huge issue, in particular for websites like Outlook 365, for example, where users do implement usually multi-factor authentication, and the weak link now really becomes this cookie secret. So whatever secret you're using to authenticate your sessions or whether that's some kind of JWT or as such, that hasn't really been a good way to protect these secrets in the browser from info stealers that are monitoring your system. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for liking and recommending this podcast and talk to you again tomorrow.